Apex Online Racing is sponsored by Elgato, who created this lovely stream deck. For more information about the stream deck, the link is in the description below. Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Apex Online Racing Grand Prix here in Italy. It's round 8 of this wonderful racing league and I'm very excited to be getting underway with it today. And bringing you the commentary today is myself, Ben Raggy McConnell and joining me is Jamie Amcasa Elder. How are you doing? I'm not too shabby man yourself. I am not too shabby indeed. We talk about this track a lot. Every time it comes up, we always say about how legendary it is. Monza being such a beautiful track indeed. Obviously, tons of overtaken opportunities. It's such a long run down up to turn one. And uh, I think we're definitely going to see some dive bombs going in, especially when you can see the tyres there available. So, super softs, softs and mediums are the dry compounds that are available to these drivers. And uh, ultimately, you can actually do a super softs to a softs strategy on a one-stop but uh, it is going to be tough to do nonetheless. However, we are live now with the qualifying. Let's get straight into it. Absolutely. I'm just setting up my spy thing, so bear with me. Uh, you keep talking. I'm just trying to get this all looking beautiful so I can give you as much information as physically possible through this race. Um, we do have a, I have a track map on my screen now. I have nearly got the penalties on my screen. I'm just fiddling. No problem. Well, we can actually just cover a, a couple of things. It looks like Zones has been picked up by a coconut, uh, as he now has coconut underscore Zones as his name. So uh, don't be deceived. It's going to catch him Carter at some point, I can imagine. Uh, what is? The fact that Zones is now coconut underscore Zones. No, it's just Zones on my screen. Ah, oh, well. On my screen, he's coconut <laughs> Zones. But anyway... Uh, looking around, so the big names are still here. You've got Beaker, Assassin, Verstappen, Enigma. Obviously, looking just for, from top to bottom. And obviously, we'll get a driver's rundown shortly from uh, the good man, Amcaster himself. Uh, but I do want to just have a little run through of my predictions whilst you're finishing the setup. Uh, Beaker's put a lot of time into this, but beforehand, he said to me he's not feeling confident uh, around this track. Paddy has been on some next level pace uh, as of recent and I think that Paddy actually will be in a position where he will deliver a very quick time but Zones has taken pole position quite frequently too so I'm going to give it I'm going to go Zones P1 Paddy P2 and P3 is going to be one of the Ferraris and I, <laughs> I, I don't know do I go Assassin or Enigma? I'm going to go Enigma I think Enigma's got it Fair enough, right I've got my layouts all sorted I have the ability now to tell you who has what penalties. Um, it has taken a while, I apologise for that. And there's a lot of other bits of information that are going to be useful later on. Uh, but now we are looking at qualifying. Um, prediction wise, it's going to be hard. Um, Beaker is quick on this track, we've seen it in the past. Um, but is it going to be quick enough to get on pole? I don't think so. So I'm going with. I'll just see they're actually here before I make the predictions. Uh, Richie B, second. Uh, Flash on pole, and Enigma third. Okay, that's a, it's a good shout. It's a good shout. I mean, Felix has been putting a lot of time in lately to try and improve uh, his driving abilities without racing line. It has been a recent change of his before he joined this league to turn off the racing line and actually really develop himself. So I'd be intrigued to see how much he has put himself in a good position just purely by doing that alone. But again, the thing is, when it comes to the racing line, it's, it's practice. It's just purely just going around the track as many times as you can to learn as far how much you can push the car in the qualifying pace. And then when it comes to the actual race pace, it's a little bit easier. Uh, to try and do that together, but we have got started to get. Oh, I was cut. Zone's actually making a bit of a mistake. Um, <laughs> uh, but we are actually seeing fastest laps now. One nineteen three zero two. Yeah, off to a good start. Uh, just on board quickly with Assassin. He's going through this. Sorry, he was going through the second chicane. He's now going over the second chicane because he made a big mistake going into it. Lost the back end, um, and that's his fast lap done with. So let's have a look further down. Ripson is. K 
coming around to finish his lap. Let's see if he can get out to the front. Enigma is the fastest with a 19.3. Ripson does a 20.2. So Enigma currently at the front. It's worth mentioning though that the man to have the most pole positions in this league is actually Zones. Uh, he's got the most poles, the most fastest lap. However, he hasn't got the most points. He seems to be quick on a one lap pace, but his race pace is a bit off. Um, so far this season, he has picked up... He won last week, as you might remember, but before then, he had only picked up three points in the entire season. Um, so it could be interesting to see what he does today. Let's see if he can put it up the front. Yeah. Um, and who are we looking at at the moment? Well, most people have done a lap and are checking themselves in the pits. Mulchen is the only other driver I can see at the minute that's actually on a flying lap. As uh, Jez has just seemed to be setting himself up to go again. I think he validated going through turn one too. But here he is now. Mulchen coming across the line. He does a 120.8. And is good enough to put him currently P10. But with so many drivers. So many quick drivers. You know there is uh, there is definitely a, an opportunity there for Mulchen to get knocked down a few places. And actually somebody else who's not yet put a qualifying time in is Blue. Who uh, overconfidently said to me uh, he's going to win this. Well, we will find out. He is on and out lap, just gone through the second of the Lesmos. So he's got a fair bit of way to go to start his lap. Um, as most people have done their lap and are now in the pits. He's pretty much him and Exterminator and Zones has actually come out already. He's not messing about, is he? He wants to do another lap. Uh, Nickma's coming out as well. So where is Blue? He's coming down towards the Parabolica. I, I think he's starting another one. Uh, unless I've got a, a screen bug, he's uh, just gone mode 4. No, there yeah, you go. He's, he's, just screen bug. he's just, definitely just starting, yeah. So I'll keep an eye out for him to see if he's actually going to live up to the hype that he's set himself because it's good to be able to have that level of confidence but now you need to have the lap times to back that up and looking at the way he just entered turn one and the exit of turn two it's not looking too hopeful for this one at least to be a quick lap time. Now, obviously there is still 11 minutes and 12 seconds remaining of the session so there's still tons of opportunity for the track to evolve and for the drivers to really uh, improve their own times but you know, to see the fact that you're having that many issues this early on is not a good sign for the rest of the session. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's not actually done a lap yet. This is his first attempt, and that's... I think, yeah, he's bailed out. I was going to say, I think he's about to bail out of this, and he has done exactly that. A uh, little mistake. Uh, one mistake, too many. And he's out. For now, Exterminator going through the second of the Lesmos himself. Um, he hasn't put a lap in yet. Um... Let's see if he can get something on the board. Obviously, 119 is where you really want to be putting it on this opening set. And let's see if Exterminator can get up to that level. Yeah, well, he's not going to do it on this lap. He's mode one and he's uh, definitely backed out. I actually caught on board with him as he went through turn four and five. And he had a terrible entry and terrible exit. Uh, it does suggest that he's uh, definitely backed out of this lap. But he has now got the opportunity here to flick it up a notch and to really give it a good blast. There he goes. So he's going to be setting himself up. He'll probably put a banker in, I think, at 124, 125. No, he is just flat out invalidated, so there's no lap time in there at all. Okay, so Korn is also coming. He's about to start a hot lap for him. But I'm looking around and seeing Zones giving it a good run. He's coming to a scary. He's run quite wide there. That might even be invalidated. Oh, that was a back end <laughs> kick out. Not quite how you uh, want to be taking um, that. No, I don't know if Zones has invalidated. He has. Invalidated one lap already, but that could have been an out lap, so they don't really count. Um, that's what the stats picks up anyway. So just say invalid. I think he validated this lap. Has. Yeah, because Jezza is also invalidated. And, and uh, Enigma's coming in as well. Not. So both drivers of the top two did a lap, and uh, in, as they were doing it, invalidated, and then before they could even finish it, had to chuck themselves back in the pits because. They set themselves on such low fuel and obviously invalidated throughout or at least weren't happy with the lap. And so they've set themselves up to go again. And now Richie B is starting hot lap as well. Yeah, currently P4, 19.8. He knows there is more pace out there. He's just going to be able to find it. As he comes down, down towards the first chicane. Oh, there's a back end there somewhere. I think it's in front of him now. After that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised to see him still going though, to be fair. 
He's sticking his foot down and going to make the best of it. And going to finish the first sector. Let's just see, he's a bit down already on uh, Enigma's time. Enigma's best is a, well, one of his times is a 25-8 in the first sector. He did a 26-2. So, um, something to also note. We haven't actually done a, uh, a lap rundown. Wait, we haven't, but I think this is one of the tracks that everyone knows better than the back of their hands, to be fair. Yeah, that's um, true. I mean, I can probably tell you the track without even looking at the screen. I'm not going to, because then I'll make a mistake. But <laughs> And then you look silly, and we no, don't want that. No, so, uh... I'll be bad enough as it is. Richie B coming round the parabolica now, about to do a lap time. It's looking pretty decent, although he might have just invalidated there. Is he going to trick himself in? He's not. He so the lap time is a one nineteen seven zero eight. Does improve by one tenth of a second, brings him uh, into a solid P five position, but it's still not enough if you want to take pole today. Seven and a half minutes remain. We are almost near the uh, little settle down period, if you like. Yeah. So the front two are back out on outlaps, uh, Enigma and Zones. Um, so where are they? Zones is ahead. He's going through the um, Lesmos as uh, Enigma's going through the first of them. Uh, where is that? That's Beaker on an in-lap, I suspect, yes. Assassin's on an, uh, a hot lap at the minute, coming up to turn four and five. Bit of a lock up there, but still nothing too severe. A little bit of gravel as well. That's not going to affect him as he only just glanced it enough to make a little rumble. But overall, the car is still going quite quickly and quite nicely. This is very important to get a good run off here because if you run too wide, which he has just done, you can invalidate. But on top of that, you also put yourself in a position where you will be really slow on the exit. And, uh, you know, obviously this is a really long run. It's actually a DRS straight, and so for you to make any sort of bad exits like that, you put yourself at risk in the race of losing a position or two. Uh, just, um, are you on board with the Assassin, were you? I am, yeah. Who took a rather large chunk out of that corner. Yeah. Uh, and he's still going, he hasn't invalidated. And so he still has a chance of finishing this lap. It's not looking too slow, but he's given up. He doesn't like it. Maybe it was too slow. Uh, yeah, maybe. Zuns is going. Enigma is going too behind Zuns. Where's Paddy? Because Paddy is someone who's actually been really quite quick when he's come to these uh, pole position lap times as well. He's done a 120.4, but he has only just started a hot lap now, so we'll see what he can deliver shortly in the session. Exterminator is also about to start. And it's intriguing to see them out at this point now. I mean, they do have enough time to do a lap, uh, but they will need to come in at the end of it if they want to have the best opportunity to capitalize on track evolution. It is a massive factor on any track and to attain as much grip as possible. And you can easily gain three, four, five tenths just off that alone. So we've actually got a little train going on here. Flash is going to be the next one to follow. Immediately by Zones, then Enigma, then Mulchin. Um, and they're all coming out to the line now. Flash goes first. He does a bit faster, a 19... And Zones goes even faster. There's Enigma in the pits. Okay. Mulchian, can I come across the line any moment? He's P12 then. So Zones takes P1. First into the 18s. Yeah, Absolutely I mean, that's insane to get into the 118s. I, honestly, as a driver myself, I can't even break the 119s. So to see these drivers <laughs> being able to do that quite consistently and get into the 118s is really quite... It's quite a bit, of a, a bit of a smite, if you like, to all the other drivers to warn them. I'm actually really quick and I'm actually in a position where you're going to struggle if you don't match my pace. And currently, the only driver who might be able to do that is Enigma. He's, he's the closest and he is four tenths off the pace. But he just seems to struggle to get a lap together that isn't invalidated or isn't quite comfortable enough on for him to actually carry it out and make sure he crosses the line so i think he's done the right thing though of pitting and getting in as quick as he can it does mean now that obviously zones will be in but we'll need to be out very quickly to capitalize on that one shot opportunity enigma will have two attempts if he jumps out now yeah zones is miles away he's just gone through the exit of ascari there's a lot of invalidations going out at the moment jez is also invalidated he's really struggling to put a lap together um, he's coming now down, down towards the Parabolica himself. Exterminator still to put a lap together as well. Um, you can see these, both the Hasses actually, it's interesting. Maybe they're sharing a setup and it's not working for them. 
because they could be starting at the back if they don't put something together soonish. Oh, uh, that was close. Sorry, Jezza. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I thought he was going to go straight into the back of Mulchin there, but no, he managed to keep himself together and not have a problem. And actually, I think that might have been Zerns. Uh, but either way, it's um, irrelevant because there was almost contact, but there wasn't contact. And we're going to look around the field and look at Felix. Ripson. Okay, who's Ripson. On a Never mind, Felix, because uh, Ripson's not doing anything. He's coming out of the Parabolica now. And his times are looking not bad. It's just all about nailing these corners, though. If you can't nail them, you're not going to get anywhere. So, it's unfortunately Ripson. for me, Felix is desynced. So I can't wow. see where he's on track because on my screen he's just crossed the line now, um, but he's also okay. he's also uh, not using DRS. He's also got no fuel and he's also using max DRS, but he's run out as well. But anyway, we'll he, see. Yeah, he's not decent for me, fortunately. I mean, we've had that issue many a times, and hopefully that's something that will be fixed going into 2019. In it's about four weeks away, isn't it now? It is. It's uh, ever close to uh, being released on us. We're very excited. And uh, I don't know about you, have you pre-ordered your game? <laughs> You're funny, aren't you? Of course I have. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Okay, so Khan crossed the line and then retired from the session. But he did it immediately on the home straight. So I'm not sure if he's going to get in trouble for that or not. He's P16. I mean, what can they do to him? Knocking back three spaces on the grid. Well, I mean, uh, if, if Exterminator and Jezza put a lap in, he might get knocked down even further. Fortunately, he's that. well out of the way, but... I'm just on board with Blue. It looks like he's still going. And he needs to get himself up this grid order. Decent-ish first section of a 25-9. On par with Enigmas. Who I think has invalidated, so he's on his way in. He's up. Is Blue, can he put it up? He didn't have there. No, he didn't. He's still going. Down this long straight, down towards the Parabolica once again. He's going to get another lap if he wants it. But he, considering he already has done one lap on these tyres, Race Monster says enough is enough. He's retired in the pit lane. Is Blue going to go faster? P9 to P4. Good jump then from him. Beautiful stuff. Blue starting to deliver a message to uh, the other drivers up there to say, hey guys, include me in your predictions. I want to be involved in these top three pr predictions, but unfortunately you are P4 at the minute, mate, and you're going to have to go again if you want to get into these top threes. Assassin is currently on a flyer as we've lost now Felix and Race Monster, as you mentioned. So three drivers have retired, not uh, not wanting to try and improve their lap times. They've just put the car in the garage and said, that, all right, we'll go for the race and we'll see how we do. Felix not quite having the best, the though. Final. Zones coming around the final. He's about to start. Never mind, ignore me. <laughs> I thought that was the finish. Jezza's coming to start his lap finally. Where's Beaker? I think Beaker's on a flyer. He is. P12 to P4. Oh, there you go. It's an improvement for him. It is. Beaker Enigma's actually likes it. Who? Enigma. It's in the pit lane. He will not be starting at the front. And where's Obi Run come from? He's also going in the pits. He's done a flying lap. He's put it P3. That is an immense result for him. All right, Ripson. He's all locked up going into turn one. Not quite having the greatest time of his life. Assassin's retired as well, so he's not going to get any better than P11. Does knock Felix down, though, as well, which is important. Flex is Marcy as well. He's out there. Oh, he's actually just retired, so P9 is the best he's going to get at 119.754. And uh, a lot of the drivers are actually dropping apart now. Beaker's still going. I don't know if he's actually going to try and commit to an Im a more improved time. Uh, Richie B, he's given up already as well, so he's not going to improve. Flash! Oh, next man. Flash sticks himself up there, though. He's in P4. Zoe's coming around the final now. Pin that throttle towards the line. This looks quick. It's not quick. Never mind. <laughs> no. Jezza, no time, though. Whatsoever, Mulchin coming out to the line. No, come out to the pit box. Beaker, pit box. Oh, here off. comes Paddy, though. Paddy, here's his opportunity now. He's run out of ERS. Is it going to be quick enough? He goes P3. Ooh. That's a prediction and a half there. That's Paddy 
really delivering something now. 119.4, he's only just a tenth behind P2. But if you look at the gap to leader, we look how close the pack is in general. I mean, we're saying like, oh, yeah, he's only P11, oh, he's P12, whatever. But we're talking the top 13, top 14, if you want to extend it just a touch, are within a second of each other, as within a second of P1. And that is just phenomenal to show. And we say about this every week, how Apex Online Racing really delivers some close-knit racing from the drivers. Yeah, oh, except for Zones, who is a country mile ahead, unfortunately. Um, so if he can go and do what he did last week and get the race win, I think last week he took the Holy Trinity, didn't he? Pole, race win, and fastest lap. I will confirm that for you now. Uh, it was pole, it was fast lap, and he's race winner. So, Zones, Holy Trinity last week, can he repeat it this week? Well, we'll find out. But he is currently pole position, and that's with a beautiful 118.937. Then, three and a half cents behind is Enigma in P2, closing out the front row of the grid. Then you got Paddy, then you got Ovi1 Kenobi, and Flash, and then Beaker in P6. Blue, seventh, Rips, and eighth. Race Monster, ninth. Richard B closes out the top ten with Flex's Massey in 11th as best of the rest. Exterminator, 12th. Assassin, 13th with Felix in 14th. Mulchion, 15th for Stepan, 16th. Corn in 17th. And then without a time is Jezza. Oh, interesting to see Jezza that far back. Not sure what's happened to him. And it's rather overcast. It is. I mean, I'm not expecting... I've not had the weather report. So I don't know whether or not it's going to be dry or not. However, I'm not thinking that there's going to be any rain. I actually don't remember the last time I saw a wet Ita Italian Grand Prix. I'm going back through my memory with Italy Grand Prix, and I can't think of one either. I'm sure there was one probably in the early noughties, as a guess. Um, but yeah, no, no rain at the moment. But it is it's cloudy, and it's a bit hazy. Um, neither of those two drivers are here, but <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we'll still have a good race on our hands. It's going to be a little bit cold on the track. It means those tyres are going to struggle to grip as we wait for everyone to actually... But taking their time, actually, today, they're normally quite quick, some drivers, and actually quite slow getting ready. Is that a sign that there is rain later on? I think it's a definite suggestion. The only thing that makes me think that there isn't going to be any rain is the fact that they, the times it will put down. I mean, unless Zones just completely missed the uh, the, the weather report. Oh, oh, that's Felix. Never mind. Um, yeah, unless they completely missed the weather report, then that does suggest that you know that there is going to be a uh, a dry session throughout the race. But anything can happen. I mean, like we say, it can actually tell you that it's going to be dry, and then it ends up being a little bit wet on the track, and you still run around in dry tires. It's just very mm -hmm. odd. Very. It's so unpredictable, and already we're seeing two drivers that have unfortunately been disqualified and reset to the uh, the home straight. Yeah, we've got a mix of tyres in the backfield. We've got from 11th to 18th, obviously, they free choice of tyres. We've got four on the softs and four on the mediums. So it should be an interesting battle at the back. They'll look to try and go as long as possible. I believe the ideal strategy is supers and softs. Mediums don't f play a factor unless you're going really conservative. Or having an incident early on. Yeah, you know, you've got it nailed perfectly on the head there. Ideal setup is to go supers to softs. Um, it does rely on you actually extending the supers just a bit more than you normally would want to. But the safer option is obviously going to the mediums if you can. Um, but again, those drivers that are outside of the top 10 have chosen to go softs to mediums because they know how much the supers can have pace around here as it comes to later stages. You do want to be able to get on the soft compound towards the end of the race because you'll be so much lighter, the track will be so much better, and you'll be able to chuck down a hell of a lot more pace and actually uh, put yourself in a more be a better points position, if you like. Unless, of course, it rains. <laughs> then it's all for nothing. Absolutely. I'm going to see if I can get a quick weather update. Um, yeah, so... So we'll take that front. Jezza, quite a distance actually off the back at the moment. He needs to catch up. I'm surprised they don't... The game doesn't really punish you for that, does it? No. No. It does not. I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just not good. Well, it's benefiting Jezza the most of everyone. He's going to have... He can slowly take himself onto the grid. of Zones is already in box. Mulchin is now in his box. And Jezza is nearly there. Nearly there. 
And he's there. <laughs> well, we are here. Everybody is in their box position and the lights are on. So when they go out, we will see all of the drivers put the foot down and off we go with the Italian Grand Prix. And its zones get enough to a really decent start. Loads of shaking, loads of wobbling in the background. Here comes Obi-Wan Kenobi looking for a move down the inside of Enigma. Is he going to be able to make that stick? He's going to stick it through. It's going to be a tight one nonetheless. He's actually had to cut the corner just a touch. Didn't get a warning for it at least. And it looks like he's got away cleanly. Up into P3 he goes. Paddy now oh, not having cars the greatest. Off the back, cars off the back. Race Monster and Richard B off track. They've had an incident on the exit of turn two. And there you go, five second stop go for Richie B as a result of that. And that is their day, gone from bad to worse to terrible. And was that a virtual safety car we got out or was everyone just going really slow? Everyone's going slowly, but the reason they're going slowly is because there's just such a huge battle that's going on well, further back. Oh, more contact. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at Verstappen now. He's actually trying to close in on Jezza, but he just lost out massively. And obviously there's no DRS yet, so he's just going to have to try and recover what he can from the situation he's in. And it's not a good one. That's the main problem for him. There was a load of battling further on. Actually, Beaker and Blue are having a good old scrap, and Beaker is still ahead of Blue, and Blue's trying to hunt him down. Well, it's been an action-packed first lap so far. We've still got a corner to go. How are they going to fare going into the Parabolica? Should be be no issues here because it's not a corner you see incidents to say the least for Stefano has got past Jezza further back was that a let pass or was that just a, a general overtake I think it might have been a general overtake and everyone so far stay on the pitch I suspect Race Monster and Richard B might come in I think there's a bit of damage on one of those cars if not both of them Race Monster's in Ooh. Richard B is continuing he actually doesn't have any wing damage. I'm just looking at it. He might have an element missing on the left-hand side, but everything seems to be all in order for him overall. But keep an eye out at the front as Zones is leading, yes. But Enigma is breathing down his neck, and it's just going to take DRS to be activated on the next lap. And we're going to see non-stop battling all the way to the end, and I think that Enigma and Zones will be uh, pulling at each other's hairs throughout the remainder of this race. Yeah, there is no damage on Richard B's car. I just had a quick check. Nothing there to be seen. Oh, that's Paddy. Sorry, Paddy has just got on the gravel and he had lost the back end. He caught it like an absolute champ. But that was a very nail-biting moment for him. He almost chucked it into the wall. And uh, obviously we're on lap two. We've not yet lost a car, but that was almost one. I think that incident has actually destabilized Ripson. He's just lost two places down that straight to Flexus Marcy and his teammate of Blue. And he's dropped like a dropped quite quickly. Let's have a quick look at the um, positions changes then. So Flex is Marcy up four places so far. Fle Felix up four as well. Corn uh, up four. Obviously you're benefiting from the Richard B and Race Monster incident. Um, yeah, and they've lost nine for Richie, nine for Race Monster, seven for Richie B. Uh, those are the big losers. Assassin's down two. He's had a nightmare season so far. What is going on with Assassin? Honestly, I don't know, because at the beginning of the season, he had he looked like he was doing pretty well in terms of his pace. We all were thinking, ah, oh, so this guy is going to deliver. I actually remember watching him in Australia and thinking, yeah, I'm, I think I can easily bet my money on him. But yeah, like you say, he's just struggling. I don't know what's happened to him all of a sudden, but yeah, he's, uh, he's really disintegrated. And actually, Ripson's looking for a move here on Blue. Blue just didn't take turn four and five nicely at all. It actually cost him quite a fair bit. He's struggling now, but he's holding on just about from his teammate. And I do just want to ask you real quick, Amkaza, where's Felix for you? Felix is 12th. Okay, perfect. On Thank the back you. of Melchion. Uh, so going back to assessing quickly, he has got a race win to his name in China. Uh, changeable condition, a wet race there. But outside of that, he's not done much. Last race, he was outside the points. Australia as well, he was outside the points. We expect a lot of him going into this season. Um, teamed up with Enigma, both were previously F3 drivers. And they've just... don't know. I mean, Enigma's gone, look, I should be F3, let me back in. Assassin's gone, I want to be F7, let me back down. <laughs> yep, and... Enigma is going for a move on Zones using simple DRS slipstream antics, and he's done it going into turn one and two. The cutback is still an option there for Zones, though. Might be able to get it done, but no, he's lost the back end. That was a big off there. Ooh, he managed to catch damage. it just enough, but he's good. Just saw a bit of wing damage and just trying to find out who that was on. It was, is it Flash maybe? Had a bit of wing damage there? There was definitely a bit of damage flying around in turn one. I'm just going to try and find out who it was. Flash is 100%, he's fine. Uh, 
What about Paddy? Has he got any damage? No, Paddy's well. Maybe it's just a bit of fluff on the screen then. I thought I saw some damage flying off those cars. Obviously, I was wrong. Well, uh, does, uh, you know, we can rest our heart rates now. We're all good. No, uh, <laughs> no damage there. But we are seeing a pass here between the two teammates in the Renault drivers. There's Ripson who managed to get DRS and slipstream past his teammate. Now Blue's just going to use the uh, the slipstream to bring him closer towards the Parabolica. So when he gets the exit, he needs to get it perfect. If he does that right, he can slingshot straight past Ripson. Uh, and then use the well, obviously using DRS as well. That'll help him out quite massively. So blue has 25% damage to that front right of his car. That could be where he came from. Um, just having a look elsewhere. Oh. Jez has got a lot of damage to his car. Race leader, um, or what was race leader's in look? Wow, interesting. That's a bit earlier than I expected, but he's got a heavy car. That happens. So Jez has huge amounts of damage on his car. Uh, 44 one side, 19 the other side. So I think he'll be coming in shortly. Yeah, right now for that matter. Okay, so looking around the field. Enigma is your race leader, especially after that little uh, wobble there from Zones. His back end kicked out just a bit too much and ended up having to go into the pits. Now, do you think that actually might have been due to the fact of how hard uh, Zones took life out of his tire in the qualifying? Because coming to the race, he shouldn't be able to. He shouldn't need to pit after four laps. Paddy, a little bit off track there. He's lost time to Obi Van, or Obi Van, Obi One, and Flash has closed up a little bit. I'm not going to make a move yet. Paddy needs to string these corners together if he wants to stay in DRS of Obi. Oh, oh no, he's he made a one. huge mistake. Yeah, he just lost the back end there. That was a major mistake. He's obviously done a very good job. Nice no, reverse on track. That he's oh. so lucky that it's ghosting. That was about to be a huge <laughs> crash. I mean, he may still get reprimanded for that because that is very uh, that is very naughty to reverse on the track in that sort of situation. Paddy's got a five-second stop-go penalty for speeding in the pit lane, but Obi-Wan Kenobi, not only did he have a hard-stopping moment as he lost control coming through Ascari, he then almost had to give someone else a hard-stopping moment as he, they almost collided together with another car. How's your heart rate? Is it calm? Yeah. No, absolutely not. I thought that was going to be the end of Obi-Wan Kenobi and then whoever it was that connected with him. But uh, obviously, thankfully, there is uh, ghosting in this game as uh, Blue would be hoping he had a better brake pedal as he gets a five-second stop go penalty for also speeding in the pit lane. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty sure that was going to be curtains for one of them there. Um, fortunately for them, it wasn't. So they are back out. And Obi-Wan is down in 15th after it's been and he's missed the first corner already. It's not going well for him. It really isn't. Somebody I want to keep an eye on too is Paddy. Watch as he goes through the second Lesmos. He's actually really struggling. You'll see him here now. So he's done the first one. He's already struggled there. Coming into the second one, he actually did it okay that That's time. Fine. But every <laughs> time he does it previously especially on the super stops anyway he kept running super wide getting into the gravel back end snapping out he'd catch it you know in in true paddy style but it's just very uh, a lot of alarm bells are going thinking that he might actually crash out this race he has no damage on that car which is the important part at the moment anyway um so enigma still leading six laps in on his stint uh, along with Flash and Beaker, they're both staying out and going long as they can. Beaker, we all know Beaker's tactics, we've seen it before. He'll be going on to the softs. And I suspect based on Flash and Enigma running as long as they can, they are, they'll be going for softs as well. And Enigma has a nice little lead already. Beaker is getting a bit of pressure though from Flex's Marcy. Both six laps in, Beaker's tyres will be hurting a little bit more than Flex's, will they? They will be indeed, okay. Let's have a look at Verstappen, who's on the back of Korn Bottas. Who's, uh, Verstappen we saw most notably in Germany when he made a huge move in the wet conditions. Managed to capitalise on the aspect of the, the wet tyres when he pitted. He pitted at the perfect time, got in there, managed to pass every single driver in the pit lane <laughs> and then went on to then take a podium position, which was the first of his season. And uh, it was a very momentous occasion. I think he was remembering that for the end of his days. I think we'll be remembering that for the rest of the season. It was uh, 
a gutsy call to say the least, but and it really worked out well for him. Um, oh, shame he Beaker. Oh, Beaker, five second penalty. That is not good for him. As so, Flash still out there, seven laps in on these super softs. I wonder how he's doing for grip right about now. He well, must be not liking acceleration. Let's take a look. Let's keep an eye on him as he comes up to turn four and five. This is the bit that's catching a lot of the drivers out. And no lockup, no back end step out. Even through the exit, he actually looks pretty cozy. This could be Flash's race. Now, I'm just checking his temperatures and they all look quite good. Um, just getting out to quite high there because it's a braking point. But now, I mean, his tyres are under 100 degrees. Which is kind of where you don't you don't want to go over 100 and be staying over 100. Um, obviously, my numbers might be slightly out. Well, I, I mean, it, might... it sounds like it's a surface temp sort of temperature because surface yeah. temperatures they fluctuate massively very quickly. Obviously, especially in the braking zones in the acceleration zones. I don't get the, core it's, temperatures, so it's yeah, it's the cores that are the problems. The cores are the bits that make the tire very very unstable. Um, and they're the ones that their drivers need to be managing and that's what they'll be focusing on more than anything but Paddy gets a three second time penalty and Zones is hunting Enigma uh, Zones hunting Enigma, let's go have a look at that then this is I don't want to say this is for net race lead because you don't know where Flash is going to come out when he pits and he will be on super racy softs when he does make that pit stop and that's what they're all going to be aware of that when he comes out, he's going to... Yes, okay, he might have lost a little bit of time on these. And Zones oh. is not losing any time on this. Or is he? He's through. Bit of contact. No damage. Zones up to P9. And Nygma sat down in P10. And he's got a Paddy behind him as well. And this is... This is an actual race. These aren't just waiting for pit stops to happen. These guys are racing against each other. Yep, and that's that's the thing that the, you know. The, obviously, these drivers are really playing in the mind, and it's going to be playing more on Enigma's mind than anybody, as Enigma's just lost a place. He's already trying to bite back at him, and that's the sort of uh, situation that you need to be thinking about as a driver. Is I can't let him go. If I let him go, he's just going to run off into the distance and take the race run away from me. And I've worked hard to get this, so now I'm going to use the DRS and the slipstream to bring myself closer. I'm not looking for the overtake here. I'm looking for the overtake on the home straight because then there's such a large amount of the track where there is no DRS action, no slipstream action and I can actually use that advantage to pull away and now Zones is going to have to be thinking a couple of corners ahead Flash is still going <laughs> I mean, this goes against my numbers, this is getting unusual now Oh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of variations that come to the numbers. Obviously, they are a guideline, and it's down to a the driver's ability and to manage the tyres, and b the car setup of the actual uh, the drivers have chosen themselves. As uh, we see, Enigma making a pass back on Zones. They come into turn one. There is Zones holding the inside for the second corner. That's actually meant now that he's able to hold it. But Enigma's not given in yet. He's actually got the better run throughout the corner, and he's actually going to be wheel to wheel with him. And keep an eye out as well for Paddy who's right on the back of this situation. He's not going to be able to capitalise, but they are going to go too wide into turn four. Who's going to benefit from it the most? I mean, bad, uh, sorry, Enigma had to back out so Zones could get away with it and not have contact, as we don't want to see another repeat of what happened between Hamilton and Verstappen, uh, Vettel. Sorry, uh, <laughs> But uh, Zones has stayed up there in P9. Enigma, again, same situation as last lap, is now in a situation where he needs to hold out, make sure he keeps himself focused, and wait for the home straight again. Yeah, Paddy is still hanging around. He's not going quietly tonight. So these are four positions. Oh, Paddy very wide there. Avoids the penalty somehow. But he didn't really make the second part. So he's lost out a lot of time there. And I think he's going to miss out on DRS as well. As race leader has finally pitted. Interestingly enough, though, so is Flex's Marcy after 10 laps on his softs. Yeah, well, I mean, that's his second pit stop, isn't it? Uh, no, it's not. Sorry, it's his first. It's his but. First. Yeah, that is very odd. He's got mediums as well, so not the fastest strategy at all. He could have easily taken the softs much further. And again, Enigma is coming onto Zerns one more time. He's gone for the massive dive. He's actually broke pretty hard. There's contact between the two of them, but no one gets damaged. Zerns has to ride the curb on the exit, but is that now Enigma ahead? He is ahead currently on the track, and he has managed to hold Zerns back just enough. 
and Paddy couldn't capitalize on anything. He's actually fallen quite the way back now. Yep. Yeah, I was going to say, Zones does have slipstream, but he's not making use of it. Um, further behind, though, so Flash came out in P11, just behind Beaker. Beaker is on super soft tyres, um, so he'll definitely be pissing again. But at least when he does, he'll have some lovely fresh super softs. Uh, Enigma is already up to the back of uh, Felix. I know you can't see it, but Felix is only 0.7 ahead of Enigma at the moment. Jez, a 10 second penalty for Connor Cutting. Yeah, and Zone just going as well. Oh. Three seconds. That was in Ascari. He's actually run wide as well, coming out of it. And that is not how you want to be going if you are trying to chase down Enigma. And obviously, as you said, I mean, I can't see myself, but if Enigma is as close to Felix as you say he is, then Enigma's actually going to be able to benefit and pulling away from Zones. And Zones is in real trouble. He's run wide there, going through the Parabolica. He's just trying to get the power down much earlier. You can see him panicking now. Mode 4 in the ERS. DRS wing obviously wide open too, but if you keep an eye on that ERS meter, there is no way for him to be able to close in the gap any further than this. He just needs to pray that something happens between Felix and Enigma, and it doesn't look like That's it has. No. Uh, Enigma is passed easily through DRS down the home straight. <clears throat> Appreciate it. you can't see it, but it's a really simple overtake, no issues whatsoever. Zones is now behind Felix. Felix lets him through, actually. He's actually got off the power. Um, interesting tactic, but I guess... I, he's going, I'm not racing you guys. I don't want to get tangled up in this. You go. I'll catch you guys up at the end. Yeah, and I think that's very smart, Felix, to think about that. He doesn't want to get involved in a situation that he knows they are faster anyway. So it gets a little bit unstable there <laughs> going through the second Lesmos. But, yeah, he's doing the right thing, oh. keeping himself clean. But Jezza is just having a mare of a race. Would you like to tell me how many penalties he's got? Uh, well, I mean, I've only seen 20 seconds of them, so uh, is there any more than that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> 20, 23? No. He's really got more than 23. He's got 29 seconds. Wow, that is uh, that is not good. That That's pretty much game over there. I mean, I think he's... there's one more, and that's him disqualified. That's crazy. I'm not entirely sure. I don't, I don't think I've ever been at the position where I knew how many points how many seconds of penalties they've had before they get disqualified. Um, we're on 13 of 27, and he already has more seconds than there are laps in the race. He nearly didn't have a back end either. But. Well, uh, the only battle that's happening on track is Zones on the back of Enigma again. But the, uh, the thing I am spotting is Enigma is much better on ERS than Zones is. Zones is doing his best to try and use what he can to close the gap in, and he has done that. I think that's how he got into the situation in the first place. However, Zones is in the best scenario possible now, which is Enigma doesn't have DRS. He has a slight hint <coughs> of slipstream from the car ahead, but it's going to be it's minimal. Yeah, it's going to be minimal anyway, just purely because of how far ahead he is. So what Zones needs to be doing is trying to control... Uh, no mind, I just got debated by Felix's car being spun on track, but <laughs> never mind. Uh, He's currently yeah. in front of Beaker as Felix. So Beaker Zones... will be getting DRS on him. Sorry. Ah, no, that's fine. So Zones needs to be uh, just trying to keep the pressure on Enigma and cause him to get uh, into a situation where he has to dump his ERS to try and defend. I think, like here, for example... Zones shouldn't really be in mode 4. The chances of him closing in are pretty high, but he's going to be doing it at a point where you get to the turn anyway. Uh, look, so they're almost in the braking zone as they come alongside of each other, so now they're going to be scrapping going into it. He locks up pretty hard, and that's actually a situation now where Enigma has a better line if he could pull it off, except Zones outdoes himself and says, Thank you, Enigma. You made <laughs> enough of a mistake for me to take it. Raggy, shut your mouth, because I'm delivering much better than you can talk about. Yeah, we saw it from previous laps on Enigma when he got to that outside point. There's rain. I see rain. I also see rain. That is uh, a very... That would explain Beaker's pit stop earlier then, why he went on to the supers instead of trying to go into yeah. mediums to the end of the race. So now we might see intermediate tyres get chucked on. Um, but I, honestly, we just have to keep an eye on C. The track grip will start to fall away. The tyres will start to cool down. So those that are on the softs and the mediums may find it a bit more harder, especially Assassin, who's 13 laps in. Here is Enigma on the back of Zones. No movements, no change of position. Assassin's now in trouble. Yeah, Jez is causing a yellow flag in Sector 1. Um, just a quick rundown of the penalties as Zones is looking to make moves on Assassin. Uh, three seconds for Verstappen. Three seconds for Korn. 
uh, three seconds for zones, uh, three seconds for Paddy, and uh, six seconds for Felix. Richie B has picked up three seconds there. Uh, zones goes easily past the assassin. That's almost like assassin wasn't fighting that, and uh, his teammate's gone through as well. I think that might have been a tactical, just to get his teammate through. Uh, where were we? Three seconds for Flex's Marcy. Three seconds for Ripson. Three for Richie B. Three for Obi. Three for Blue. And 32 for Jezza. It's only a, slow, a small little dent in his race situation there for Jezza. Unfortunately, it is pretty much a dead last scenario now. <laughs> unless he just turns up some uh, next. It turns up with a whole new engine and a whole new uh, drive. But it's not quite working out how he wanted. But it is looking really good for the Toro Rosso drivers who are currently sat third and fifth. Uh, as it uh, as it stands, and uh, it's looking pretty good. I think it's looking really good actually for Verstappen. We're all going to remember what he did in Germany. It's now raining in the middle of the race. Is Verstappen going to make the wonder call again and have it come off like a dream? Of course, that was under a safety car. Um, but when it's raining, that can cause a safety car quite easily, as everyone is really struggling for grip. Um, is he coming Verstappen, in? No, he's not. No, I mean, we was it last race Ooh. as well that we thought every single time he's going past, oh he's going to come in, he's going to come in. No, he's not. He's not. Mulchin's in uh, there. Mulch, look at that. Yeah, I was going to say Mulchin is in. Inters, do you reckon? Well, his softs are towards the end of their life, so it's whatever it is. Inters. It's a big call, and it is Inters. That's a big call, exactly how you put it. So intermediate tires on a track that has not yet had the uh, DRS disabled on it. So to remember. The best situation you could be in to put the Inters on is that you want to be coming out of the pit lane when the DRS gets disabled due to the wet conditions. So now we're going to be seeing Mulchin coming into turn one. You can already see that his car is just not feeling great at all. The rain is not hard enough for him to really benefit from this tyre. And I'm looking around. Beaker is oh, coming up to yeah. the back of Assassin. Assassin might lose out here. I was about to say, they are getting close. Enigma is close to the zones as well. And, yes, I mean, and Assassin didn't look comfortable off that corner. Beaker's going to out-drag him down the hill under the original track towards Ascari. And he has that quite comfortably. Enigma still on the back of zones further up as well. Who's going to be the next man to blink, though? Alchian, I think, blinked a couple of laps too soon. Starting to get little spots of water forming on the cars which basically means it's getting it's getting there it's nearly there sector three yellow that is uh, flexus marcy he is off track at the exit of ascari still going and he is going to be losing a few places and here comes richie b flexus marcy moves out his way i think he actually broke to let him past Mulchin though, he's on the Inter still, obviously, he's on his uh, outlap that's finished, the grip not quite as good as he liked through Parabolica, but no one else on track has blinked, he's actually lost a place now to Obi-Wan Kenobi, so the Inters are definitely not the tyre of choice right now, he's actually struggling way more than he should be, question is though, is he going to break in time to avoid Obi-Wan Kenobi? Yeah, well, he... Massey is in as well, he's pushing on Inters, um, so two cars are now on them, I think the leaders might be coming in this lap. That's my suspicion. We'll but the rain just doesn't look hard enough. Like, there's no spray being kicked up at all. There's nothing to suggest that the drivers are actually struggling. If you watch the way that they're charging now, Enigma's closing down the back of the only so zones has gone, gone way off there. That is not how you want to be taking that. And now this is Enigma, who for once is actually going to go for the attack here. This is a lead up to Parabolica, and Enigma's been playing it smart throughout most of this, and he actually has made the move stick, and he's up in a P4. However, Zones will get the DRS on the home straight to come straight back at him. Assuming Enigma looks like he's going in the pits, actually. He, he is. is. Big call, then. That is... That's one of the front runners, obviously, as you can quite clearly tell. Uh, and we'll see. He's got to be going on to Inters to stop at this point, hasn't he? Yeah, he is. Look at that. That's uh, So he is the first one to lay down the poker face. But this time, he isn't bluffing. He's gone in. He's done the Inters. He's now going to come out around. Well, he's going to stay there at P11. But that that's that's a huge now, call. Richard having him. Oh, yeah, P12, then. Let's see how he does breaking into the first corner. Cold 
tyres on a slightly damp track. Oh, Flash, sorry, Flash has just made a huge move on Assassin. Went down the inside, obviously, and there's brand spanking new super softs, by the way. So he's decided that the track is not going to be wet enough to go on the intermediate tyres at all, and it's, he thinks he's ready for the supers to stay in that situation, and he is. Who do you think's on fresh supers? Uh, Flash. Flash is on seven lap old softs. That's a big old rip for me. Flash is on <laughs> zero lap old softs. I can't, uh, super softs, according to me. Uh, no, nope, it's seven lap old softs. Oh. Otherwise, he'd be a lot lower down than he is. Well, I mean, <laughs> somehow he's on zero lap old super softs and he hasn't done a pit stop on my screen, so that's interesting. So, where uh, is he for you, P7 <laughs> then? P7, yeah. Okay. Uh, Assassin's not far behind him. And just wondering if we're going to see any more pit stops this lap. Where is Enigma? He's actually just lost another place. This time to OV1. They're going to go side by side on the exit of Ascari, and Enigma is dropping back. Zones gets past Corn. Actually, Enigma is going to come straight back. I mean, yellow in sector two. That is Flex's Marcy on the Inters in the barriers. And that is a heavily damaged front wing on that Red Bull. Yeah, that left side is in bits. He's got no end plate, he's got no elements. He's actually. <coughs> never mind, that was Felix again. <laughs> this is uh, this is quite Felix difficult. Is Felix has just put a fresh set of super softs on. Um, he's coming out of the pits. He's going to be ahead of Race Monster, who's just going on into the pits. And he's in a little race of his own at the moment. Multian's the next one up the field, and that's about a seven second gap. Interesting. Okay, so Enigma is on the back of Obi Wan Kenobi. He's uh, uh, obviously Enigma was the first out of the front runners to go onto the intermediates. It doesn't appear as though they are the necessarily tire of choice. The DRS is still enabled. I think this might actually stay like this for, for the rest of this race. I think it might stay just wet enough to be raining, but not wet enough for you to go onto the intermediate tires. As, I mean, these drivers are in a weird situation now. Flex of Marcy off track, and he's now got a problem because cars are streaming past, and he wants to cross the track and get into the pit lane. He's been able to do it and pick Aww. up some penalty in the process. That wasn't surprising if you saw him. Yeah, Beaker I did. Um, Beaker's in the pits, and he's not moving. I've just seen his tyres change. Oh, there you go. He's out again. He so is. we're all good. Disaster averted, Beaker is still alive and still going strong, so we'll see how he can do throughout the race. He feels as though it's intermediate tyres now. The rain has definitely picked up. I can see it coming down a lot harder than it has been for the previous few laps. And maybe I am completely wrong, but he's actually going to have Obi-Wan Kenobi coming right past him. So Beaker is not going to be able to hold off the Red Bull. And now he has a lot of work to do to get further up in the points positions. Well, he's not far off the back of Enigma, and that's kind of like your pace car at this point in time. If you look at gaps to lead, it's about a 25 second pit stop. So Enigma is still quite a distance back if exterminator pits, or when exterminator pits. But those front runners on those softs, they are taking those tyres to their extreme in the wet conditions as well. I've got the softs to last only 17 laps, so I know some people can say they last well into their 20s, but my Stefan must be feeling the pain out there. Old tyres in the rain. And look at that, he's just gone very wide at the Parabolica. He's got to be coming in now. He let's, is. Let's oh, Zones, Zones is in as well. That's that's a big move. So Zones, obviously one of the front runners, he's pitted. He's actually managed to get in front of a step. And whether or not he stays like that after the pit stops have happened is another story. Actually, I think that's... Uh, yeah, he's good. Okay, so we'll see. Is Verstappen going to get the better pit stop? Is he going to get held by traffic? He isn't, so he's immediately straight off again. But Zones has managed to get stay out in front of him. So good stuff from Zones. Managed to make the pass happen on the uh, entry to the pit lane. And beautiful stuff there from uh, Toro Rosso. Yeah, uh, they're going to come out just ahead then of Enigma. I'm looking at Corn and Enigma. It's not going to be as close as I thought it was going to be for a second. So... And then we're dropping back to what is at the moment P4, because the front guys are expected to stop any moment. But still, we still to see the DRS disabled screen. Yeah, Which... it's very odd. I mean, it looks like it's pretty wet on the track, the way that the yeah. intermediates have now started to come to life. But I don't honestly, I have no idea now. I think the drivers are going to be really struggling to understand the conditions, trying to work out what is best. 
And for the most part, everyone's gone on the intermediates. But the top four drivers are still out there and are still doing a very hard stint. Well, I'm watching the gap between Zones and Assassin. It is coming down like there's no tomorrow. It was eight seconds two corners ago. It's now six and a half. And it's going to come down again on the exit of here. If it is wet enough, it's oh. powered out. It's going to cut the gap. But Felix has actually got past Molshin. I know you can't see that. So that's which is interesting considering he's on the super softs. But nope. Exterminator has pitted. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I was about to, about to mention. Now. He has also agreed it's time for the Inters. Yeah, Assassin as well has agreed to it. So Flash and Paddy staying out. Are they hoping that it doesn't get wet? Or are they hoping it gets wetter? So I think we're now in that window. Well, I mean, like I say, we still haven't seen the DRS disabled screen, which is what is just fascinating to be in this sort of situation. We expect, oh, well, there's uh, Paddy struggling. He's just completely cut turn four and five as if it wasn't <laughs> even there. So interesting. We'll have to see. I think he's going to come in now. Yeah, you can see, look at the rain. It's starting to come down quite hard now. I think the DRS disabled is going to about to be popping up any second now. But there is a battle forming for P5. You see, Versteppen is lead P4, sorry. For Versteppen is holding this up. Exterminator is closing in on him. Corn is not that far away. He's actually bringing it in just a touch. 7-10 separates the two of them. And uh, Enigma, all he has to do is just improve slightly. He's on warmer intermediates. I think he might bring it in. Well, considering which is kind of against what happens, the Exterminator is able to use DRS in the wet conditions. As far as I was aware, as soon as you put those uh, wets or inters on, you don't have DRS at all. It's just disabled in part of the car. But I guess this is a game and it's not real. Uh, <laughs> oh well, cool. something that is real is Khan is making a pass on Exterminator now in the lead up to the Parabolica oh, as Paddy gets a 5 second stop go penalty for speeding in the pit lane. No surprise there because he was really struggling with those tyres, he just couldn't Flash. get them to break in time. But uh, yeah, Flash, where is he? Is he trying to stay out on drives? So we're only 4 laps from the end, Dearest oh. is now disabled. So Paddy's actually made the best call of the lot, but I would say they're one on two lap holes probably made the best call because they were making ground. I'm just on board with Flash and you can see how careful he is on that accelerator. I think he re is now realising he should have come in last lap. Yeah, I think so he's going. Gap is going. Whoopsie, I made a poopsie and it's not worked out for him as much Jezza. as he intended. Jezza, I've just seen him completely ignore turn four and five. I don't know if my eyes are deceiving me, but he's on super softs. Yeah, he is. Don't worry. My timing board's a little bit messed up at the moment, but um, I think that's now 40-odd seconds he's got penalties. I'm just going to try and reset my timing board and see if I can get... No, I can only get the top four, which is annoying, but hey. Well, looking around the field, so Flash is currently still your race leader, although that is looking to be changing any second now. Because they're going to get a second, uh, three second time penalties. He's closing back in on Corn. Back in, stepped out just a touch there. Verstappen in trouble now. Here comes Corn with the slipstream and the DRS. He's actually put into mode zero. There's no, sorry, the ERS was what I meant to say, but there is no DRS there. The DRS would be here if it wasn't disabled. Yellow flag there, that's Jezza retiring. So he has finally retired. He's actually done that massively on the left-hand side. I think he actually went wide on the exit and binned it. Well, yeah, he had 42 seconds worth of penalties at this point. Which I think is the most I've seen in a very, very long time. I don't think he was liking this track. Flash is coming out of the pits. Where is he going to come out? He's going to come out in P10 because Mulchin is going to go streaming past him. But he's only saving graces. He's going to have some fresh rubber on that car. And Assassin right up his rear. And Nickman's made a decent recovery drive up to fifth after his very early pit stop. And he has got a chance of a podium here if he can get it together. He's going to have slightly older tyres than everyone else around him. And it's looking like Zones might have this one in the bag. We're on 24 of 27. Three and a half second lead for Zones over for Steppen. And can I just draw your attention to Verstappen and Colin Bottas's position changes? They are by far the biggest winners here. They have gained 14 places uh, since the start of this Grand Prix. 
That is incredible stuff. They've played the strategy perfectly. And I think someone in the official Formula 1 teams needs to sign Verstappen up for their strategy teams. Because he <laughs> is able to read the situations perfectly. Especially when it comes to the weather being wet. That's when he really just lights everything up. And it's not, not just his pace is pretty on point as well now. And Verstappen, I think it's going to be a situation. We're going to see him win a race by the end of the season, I reckon. Oh, Assassin just a little off track. He's lost the place to Richie B. So he's dropped back a smidge. Um, so a quick rundown of penalties then. Zones has three seconds. Um, Verstappen has six seconds which is going to be crucial and Nigma gains a position um corn has my time my screen is a little bit sort of jumbled up here so corn has six seconds as well uh Monchin has been uh enigma where is he i think he has none and that's where he's going to gain position he's going to get second place and if you can really hammer it he might get the race win here um exterminator has three seconds. Beaker has zero as well, so Beaker could benefit from these penalties as well. A bit further back, Paddy in seven has six. Uh, Ripson in eighth has. Where is he? There he is. He's got six as well, so there's a fair few people with six. Uh, just behind him, Flash has zero, so as it stands, he's going to gain a place. Mulchy, we just saw pick up another penalty. He's on three. And Richard B just behind him in 11th has six so it's looking good if your name's enigma it's looking fabulous if your name's enigma but also it's looking fabulous if your name's Colin bottas as he might be able to get the uh, the slipstream down here as we're on the second to last lap of the race it's been a phenomenal stuff from most of the drivers here especially zones who's managed to deliver a, a top-notch performance holding on to p1 as it stands he does i believe have penalties uh, as you just did a rundown a second ago, if I remember, I think you said he had three. He did. Yeah, so Zerns won't lose anything. No, he's very cozy right now. It would have to be a hell of a drive from Enigma to be able to close in enough to be able to capitalize on that penalty. As you but, said, Enigma doesn't have any, but he will still take P2. If Zerns picks up one more, Enigma is on the cusp of taking him. He's that would be huge. Can you imagine if Enigma just claimed the race win from P4? That would be <laughs> enormous. He is right on the cusp at the moment. He's six. He's now just gone under six seconds. Um, I think it could be touch and go if Zones picks up the extra penalty. I wonder if that's playing into Enigma's mind. He knows. He might know the gaps up to Zones and how much he needs to close up. Because that is what could cost. Could cost Zones the win and get Enigma the win. It could. Um, crucially, actually, that might. Uh, Enigma is third in the championship at the moment. Um, he will close up. A bit onto Paddy, obviously. Um, Paddy's got a decent lead at the moment, though. He's 20 points ahead of Enigma. Flash and Assassin picking up penalty. That was Flash's first as well, wasn't it, I believe? I think it was as well, yeah. It was, yeah. Can I just draw your attention to this very extensive battle that's going on for P2 at the minute? Here comes Colin going round the uh, the outside into turn one, but then going into turn two, well, he couldn't actually get the uh, the car alongside in time, so he's not been able to capitalise on it. But this is actually bringing the pack closer. We now have a five-car battle for P2, and it's only going to take one of them to get one penalty too many for a drivers like Beaker and Enigma to capitalize even more than they already are. So Beaker's going to gain a place or two. Uh, I think he's going to jump P3, isn't he? Yes, he will. Uh, that Beaker is huge. Enigma both have zero penalties. Sternex has three seconds of penalties, so he'll drop behind Beaker. Uh, Paddy picks up another penalty, but he's down in seventh, so not too much to worry about. That's nine seconds he's got as he loses place to Ripson, so he's actually going to lose place to Flash as well is Paddy, and I think he might have had a little loft there. Um, oh, the Ripson there's Ripson. Well. Yeah, sorry to cut you off there, but Ripson right. just lost the back end coming out of the second Lesmos, and now we're in a situation where if you look at P1, very cosily ahead, 5.8 5 seconds ahead of, uh, of Verstappen, as he's coming around the final corner, oh, he almost lost the back end, <laughs> but he has done a so beautiful goodness. race. Nailed it in qualifying, crosses the line to take the 25 points. Corn's got, for... Corn's got it. And there's a contact. Big contact. Verstappen is out. 
on the final corner. Contact with Korn, who loses a place. Enigma takes second. Beaker takes third. Well, Stefan is going to be fuming. But look how close his car is to the actual line. It's there, right behind his car. He just couldn't make it to the line. On the final lap, he tried to get the position back. He would have been so frustrated because that is a massive points achievement there. If he'd have been able to get it, well, I think he would have been P5, P6. And, uh, yeah, now he's he's just not going to score any points at all. That's a disaster. Yeah, well, Korn had a five-second stop go as well. So that would have cost him that position if Verstappen had literally just stayed with him. But... Sometimes you don't know those. Well, I didn't know that five seconds existed until he crossed the line. Um, I mean, we could have found out, but what's done is done. Mulchin lost the place to Assassin as they crossed the line. Quite literally two tenths between them as they crossed the line. Mulchin ran out of fuel. That is. And last but not least, over gone. That is incredible, and that was such an exciting Grand Prix to commentate on. There was battling non-stop. The weather conditions just made it so difficult for anyone to really gauge what it was, and the man who actually gets DNF'd on the final lap was the one who really capitalised on the weather conditions. And uh, yes, he is sadly out of the race, but that man there, Zerns, takes the race win. Beautiful stuff from him. Enigma manages to claim P2, and Beaker with a podium as well. That is beautiful stuff from the three drivers. Really delivered here in Italy. And uh, my only question for you, Bika, uh, for you, Ancasa, is yeah. who's your driver of the day? Is that your driver of the day, is it? Is uh, it yes, it, it is, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's just have a look as we go through the migration house. Just have a look. It's it's either... It's one of the front three, if you ask me. Um, <sighs> go on, I know you want to. Just I do it. I don't want to. I don't want to just give it to those. That's the do thing. it. No, I want just... To... Give it, to Beaker. give it to Beaker. No, give it to Enigma. Okay, well, we have we now... We counted him out, don't forget. We completely counted Enigma out because he pitted so early. Don't forget that. He was down well in the bottom, lap, several laps too early on the inters. We were like, that's Enigma's race done for. That's him out. And he's recovered it to P2. So great credit to him. Absolutely. So that is it for the Italian Grand Prix. Let's have a little rundown of the drivers. So Zones takes the win here with the 25 points in P1. Enigma in P2. Beaker gets a podium. Uh, started off in P6 as well, so good stuff from him. Exterminator in P4. Massive jump up for him from 12th to 4th. And Korn, who was on par with Verstappen for, uh, Verstappen, sorry, for the amount of pe uh, the uh, positions gained. He sits in P5 with Rips in 6th. Flash in 7th. Assassin 8th. Mulchin in 9th. Paddy finishes off the points positions in P10. Richie B gets 11th with Race Monster in 12th. Felix takes 13th with Obi-Wan Kenobi in 14th. And then your, we had a massive DNF there from Verstappen, who finishes ahead of Blue. However, Blue unfortunately was lapped, which is why I didn't get it. And Jezza and Flexus Massey are your additional DNFers for the race. So, that is it from us oh. here at the Apex Online Racing Tier 4. It's been fabulous here commentating for you for the Italian Grand Prix. I've been Ben Ragan McConnell, and this has been Jamie M. Casa Elder. And from us, we'll see you guys next week for more Apex Online Racing action. Good night. See you, see you in Japan.